thanks again, John, for, for joining us and participating in our film. We were talking earlier um, in the house about um, kind of the nature of creativity and, and, and your will to imagine and create and stuff. And just kind of curious to maybe talk a little bit about that. Um, well, I, I think, you know, the un I think the, the, uh, the, the force that created us is uh, expressing itself through our existence. I don't believe that a musical idea starts in your brain. I believe it starts at a place before that that we don't have any direct contact with. And, um, and, and, uh, and I believe that everything that we do, every, every, everything that we create is, is nature expressing itself the same way that when a flower grows out of the ground or a tree grows out of the ground, it's nature expressing itself. And, you you might say that the tree is expressing itself by the way its branches move out but it's the force of it's the force that drives nature that's uh that's that that we don't that the tree is the tree is the visible the visible uh the visible appearance the visible thing that appears to our five to our senses but um but i don't at all believe it's the source of why everything is perpetuated all the time you know and um Music is, a, it's an ineffable thing uh, that I don't think words can really do any good to, to really give us any true understanding of. Um, it's, 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 uh, we, we are able to make contact with that current or that, that uh, the creative force of the universe or the source or God or whatever you want to call it. Um, we're able to sort of uh, connect with this, with the intelligence of this by, uh, learning uh, a musical language, learning a musical instrument, uh, uh, learning how to identify a sound and, and, and a feeling and to be able to learn how to gradually express that feeling through an instrument. Um, and, uh, and, and so, so the, the more, the, the, it, I, I've, I feel like it's, it's not just it, like we could, the the idea of somebody considering themselves responsible for a piece of music is ridiculous. It's we're 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 only acting into the 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 uh, the laws of nature that that have you know that that have that have given us the possibilities that we're exploring with our the intelligence that we've been given. You know, uh, the you 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 have uh, some something like the the frequency spectrum from low to high it's that's what we're working with that's here whether we're here or not it exists as as part of the structure of physical reality uh and and our brains are learning to interact with it through learning an instrument you know um or through using our voice in a certain way um but the pol possibilities are presented in this kind of invisible silent way they're just there you know uh sound the laws of acoustics are what they are the 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 frequency spectrum is what it is the 12 the 12 note to the octave scale was just something waiting to be discovered but which was already a mathematical possibility before um what's his name uh, uh pet pet ah, can't, can't remember his name pet, pythagoras pythagoras, and, pythagoras thought of it and and uh and and so uh you know it's the, i just believe these things you know bob moog said it in that documentary of you guys it's just it's it's not so much that he was inventing something as much as it was just it's it was there waiting to be invented and it was just up to somebody to discover it you know and it's that way with any piece of music i don't i i, I think it's been the big lie that's been uh that's been perpetuated ever since the star making machine of hollywood started uh the, the uh you know the 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 star making machine of Hollywood has perpetuated a lie that the image is the thing, and uh, that 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 the that the person that the thing responsible for a, a great actor or a great musician, it's just been continued by the music business is is they they get this idea into the public's head that it's the the physical image of the person and the name of the person that is responsible for the creation of what they do and they're not that's not what creates it the what creates it is a is 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 uh is is the imagination and and the thing that 
the thing that makes it possible for one person to be in the right place at the right time in their life to create the things that they create, it has to do with a really complex um, structure of, of the mind and the soul and, and, and the nervous system and everything. Uh, all these unknown things that are taking place in the subconscious, which, which can be just as much structured by terrible things as it can by good. You know, a, a person could be nothing but abused and put down their whole life and for whatever reason, their, their will to, to live, their, their love for music, their, their feeling for music, um, and, 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 all the, and all the fucked up things that have happened to them, all, uh, all combined to, to make perfection, you know? They, I mean, just for example, somebody like Jimi Hendrix having a really difficult life growing up, nevertheless, that was exactly what made him the person who was capable of doing the beautiful, perfect, you know, perfect music that he did, or, or some kind of disadvantage like Beethoven being, uh, being deaf, uh, you know, things, things that appear to be disadvantages somehow in the complex network of the universe's intelligence end up working, uh, working towards making this perfection. I, I really don't believe that somebody would, would do it with some kind of a perfect life. And this is just all stuff, it can't be explained. Nobody, nobody understands how, you know, what, what, why it is that results in it, but it's not because Jimi Hendrix looked the way he looked. It's not because Jimi Hendrix danced the way he danced or, 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 or because his name was fucking Jimi Hendrix, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like these things are just meaningless, yet the way, the, the way that the business has used these media tools has perpetuated this idea that what's important is that he's the greatest guitarist ever and he's Jimi Hendrix and there's his picture, that's him. And it's like, you know, the, 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 o the only real picture of him is his music, you know, the, 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 um, the, the only thing that, that we should be like putting up on a pedestal is, a per is, 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 is the works of somebody's imagination and the imagination itself should be catered to by the people who, uh, whose responsibility it is to, to get, to take music, you know, to give, to take somebody's music from them to an audience, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it's the, it's the real star of the whole thing. I don't believe that the human being is the star and I don't believe their name is the star. I, I think it's their imagination. That's the star. And just because it's something you can't package, just because it's something you can't take a picture of, just because it's something you can't measure by it's number one, or it's sold this amount or this many people love it, or this many people come to see it. Uh, you can't, you can't, uh, you just, there's, there's, there's no, there's no way to quantify the imagination and there's no way to, to, uh, to sell it directly. That's all it is. I, I, I think, uh, when I first started, I was really thinking of it as being me that was now expected after years of holding up in my bedroom, practicing all the time. Uh, I thought it was me that it was now expected to be good on command, you know, um, I joined a band that was at the time my favorite band and uh and and so so it was it wasn't it wasn't like the same kind of musical development that a person can have by just sort of following their intuition and following the course of their interests and their imagination and and eventually stumbling upon something that 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 they that they really feel like uh is what they're here to do in my case like I joined a band and basically like was under a tremendous amount of pressure to be liked, to be good, <laughs> you know, and, and I gradually realized that all those kind of concerns really disrupt creative thought and really stifle it, you know? Um, so the more I, the, the more I got out of the way, the more, the more, uh, the more I stopped believing that it was me that was doing it, but the more I started just allowing the force that was making me feel what I feel to, uh, to be the thing that was, that was carrying the whole thing and, and running the whole thing. Um, I just found that music was there. It wasn't something that had to be forced. It wasn't something that, that I needed to put myself under any pressure to do. I just felt like it was just something that was happening, you know? Um, and, and, uh, and so, so I, I, you know, Unfortunately, I was already so off balance from being such an under putting myself under such so much pressure for a couple of years that that uh, by the time I was doing that, 
I didn't really understand why I was feeling what I was feeling. I probably couldn't articulate it as well back then as I can now. But but uh, so so it, I ended up just having this real distinct feeling that uh, that the image wasn't the thing, and that and that that it wasn't the people that were that were responsible for doing this, and somehow that that by uh, by by being a part of the world that I was in at that time, uh, I w I was I was. Uh, I was disrupting the flow of creativity and that it was uh, it was going to gradually uh, I was going to gradually sort of lose contact with it was the feeling that I had and so uh, I ended up going really far in the other direction and just pretty much just spending all my time painting for five years and with no thought whatsoever to what the products of my imagination uh, would be worth to anybody else and that was a really healthy thing for me to do at that time. So, so yeah, so when I'm performing, it's, it, I mean, you've, you've got, you, it, it's a little weird. I, I like recording more than performing because you really do, you just close your eyes and you're, 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 you're especially recording alone. You're just, you're alone with the force of music. There's no other distractions. There's no, um, there, there's no possibility for your brain to go anywhere else. Uh, if you are a physical person standing in front of people, uh, you're getting certain charges. Luckily, it's the it's the energy transference between the performer and the audience, and the audience and the performer that I really enjoy. I really do love seeing people's faces smiling. I love seeing you know the light shining out of people's eyes and stuff. Like it's it's really it's it's what makes me love it. You know. Um, uh, are you are you present in the moment? But 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 uh, you know what I like doing on stage is just shutting my eyes. I I've gradually stopped caring about entertaining the audience in any way because I I found that these these things that, that uh, a performer gets in the habit of thinking that they need to do in order to in order to be entertaining uh, jumping around and stuff like that so you, you start doing it because you feel it but eventually you get like any habit you just start doing it and uh, and I and I started gradually realizing that uh, that it just didn't matter that that the the important transference is in the in what you're feeling inside to the audience and they will they will respond with enthusiasm if what you're feeling is strong enough and 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 if the, if what they're feeling is strong enough you'll it'll it'll just notch you up to a little bit of a higher level you might be able to play faster on stage than you could if you were in a room by yourself or you might find yourself just putting an energy into it that 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 uh that's just a little more intense than what you would do in a studio it's not necessarily better but it's just it's just uh, it's just en human energy bouncing off one another the same way it does when people have sex or whatever, and um, and and so so I I uh, but mo but most of all it, it's been important for me to just to just really uh, be be thinking of the music and be thinking about the force that's making those people feel what they feel and the force that's making me feel what I'm feeling, and to not think of it as all at all about you know, I, I don't think a performer should ever judge themselves as they're performing if they make a mistake or, or, uh, or if they didn't play such a good solo or if they did a bad drum fill or something like. It's stupid stuff to think about, and it's and it's 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 stupid to 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 be judging yourself as you're going by. It puts you after, which once something's already happened, it's just like regretting the past. It's like it doesn't. There's there's no point in it. It's already happened. Um, and and uh, the best thing you know to do is to live in the moment and to worry about the very next step. To worry about the you know, not worry about, but think about the next step. You know, so so when I'm playing, it's it's I'm usually sort of lingering between being right in the moment or foreseeing things before they happen. A, a musician gradually is uh, is able to uh, be at one point in a song, say like two measures before, but you can anticipate what the fourth measure of a cycle is going to be like and you anticipate what it would feel like if you put a note say on the you know on the on the on the 10th 16th note of the of the bar or something you you don't you don't you don't even need to use the symbols or numbers or anything in your head uh, unless they're equivalent with the musical feeling all you have to do is picture the musical feeling i i used to do this form of meditation where you would sort of uh you would try to imagine a a, uh, uh, you, would, you would try to imagine the feeling of steel or you would try to uh, hold hold a, a shape in your mind like a red circle and 
and hold it there and and uh, and not let it change shape and not let it change size and just uh, and just try to to hold it in your mind and I and uh, as I was doing these things every day or you try to imagine the smell of chocolate and hold the the, the feeling of the smell in your mind you know um, <clears throat> you 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 uh, smell of chocolate the taste of chocolate and and uh, and you you try to hold hold these things in your mind and uh, and and I realize that I'm doing that all the time in music it's it's uh, I'll often imagine a, a rhythm that I that I can hit on the guitar, you know, uh, and I'll imagine it say four measures ahead of time, and Flea will have been hearing the same thing and will hit it at the same time, you know. It's like it, it, something is offering us these things. It's not. It, it's it. Uh, they're they're. If your if your brain is open to them, and if you you've developed the right relationship to the laws of music and 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 to your instrument, um, you'll just find them waiting there for you. You know, uh, I I really think it's this idea that oh God, how could I ever be a guitarist? I'm never going to be uh, you know Eric Clapton or something. It's like it's like the, these kind of ideas that that the person is this intimidating figure who's this great god is. It, it's really it, it's it's interrupting the the and the fact that people are judging themselves by some kind of as if there's some kind of uh, criteria that that has anything to do with these intimidating uh, you know these intimidating godlike figures. It's it's uh, that 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 that's the thing that that we're like reaching for. And if we're we're not giving, I just feel like any a, a child has this relationship to the creative force, you know. Yeah, your parents gradually, you know, uh, stifle that that your connection to that creative force, and gradually sh shove your face in the concrete. But and so do your teachers and school system, and everything's working against you. But but um, but the force of creativity, nature is not working against you. It's right there for you at any time. You just, you know, you just have to be ready to not judge yourself and to be open to whatever is going to come through you, and to to be ready to not to not. Uh, to not judge it as it comes through, but be all right with it, whatever it is, because it's just the universe expressing itself. It's not, uh, it's not something, nothing's expected of you, you know, you just have to, just, um, you just have to be there for it. And sometimes, sometimes to get yourself in a position to be there for it is something that takes years of selflessness, you, or years of just a, a just a, a, just a love for music, just having, for, for no reason at all, you just, for whatever reason, music produces the feelings in you that it does, and playing an instrument produces the feelings in you that it does, and you just follow, follow the light. And and uh, sometimes, you know, I mean, I, I know my my years of practicing guitar, they weren't really very emotional. You know, I spent a lot of time just practicing scales and learning Frank Zappa instrumentals and trying to learn the most complicated music I could. But um, it created a it it create it created a it, my the the way my intelligence was able to co to uh, to to relate to uh, and and connect with the 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 nature of music and the feelings that music arises that music brings about in me um, ended up making me making me able to just uh, making me be able to to uh, form a musical thought in my head and be able to uh, be able to bring it out into physical reality through my instrument. I, I remember being a little kid hearing music in my head all the time. I would hear songs in my head as a seven year old kid. I, I had no idea how to produce them and the, you know, how to bring them out. I just, I just would hear them. And, and, uh, and, and it's, it's only through the years of playing an instrument without any reason other than just because you love doing it that, uh, that, that eventually you, you learn the chords, you learn the, you learn you learn the intervals you learn uh you 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 learn all kinds of musical references by learning other people's music and gradually what you hear in your head can come out it's really you know there's nothing intimidating about the process other than maybe you've got to put some time into developing a relationship with an instrument or two you know um i i i you know i really i just don't think people should be so threatened with this idea of being great cuz there's just the only people who have any right to say what's great or not or you know the i don't know the main like people like stravinsky or you know or bartok or somebody like like 
they have they had certain criteria by which they judged music, but they 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 it, they knew from the beginning that it was ineffable. You know, they weren't trying to describe it. They would they would describe their criteria based on uh, you know in a theoretical way and 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 uh, just the same way jazz musicians would discuss it or something. The idea that music's begun to be judged by uh, by by the feeling that a that a star generates in the in the in the minds of people, it's really confused the issue, you know. So so I, I really believe that people should get back to, you know, seeing music for, for what it actually is and not for these things not not for uh, not for the people who play it or the or the or the uh, or the various ways in which it's sold, you know. Um, some, something, uh, an interesting definition of music that I heard was, uh, was, was that, or, or an interesting description of it is, is, is that um, it's, mu it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's sound, uh, it's, it's, it's the, it's a coordinate point between sound and human intelligence. It's it's um, it's it's the meeting of those two things. Um, sound on its own isn't music, uh, as 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 much as uh, you know. John Cage must m might have you know loved the sound of uh, of uh, you know traffic in New York, or as much as we might like the sound of birds singing. It's not music until it's organized by human thought, and and and. Uh, and the fact that these, the fact that sound even enters our ears and then turns from a waveform into an electrical current in our brain, and that translates in transfers, and that and then that becomes a, a musical feeling. And then we have the, you know, the, and the, the fact that that music constantly is turning into, from one thing into another, it's it's just one of those things that, that's just happening, and we have no idea why. You know, it's like. Scientists can only explain what's happening, but they can't explain why it's happening. You know. Yeah. So I, I, a good uh, a good description of what music is uh, that I've heard is that it's it's uh, it's it's sound being organized by human thought or by human intelligence. Um, uh, the idea that that as 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 much as we might hear uh, things that seem musical to us in 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 traffic noise or 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 in the sound of birds singing, it's not it's not actually music until it's organized by human intelligence. Um, and and uh, the fact that the fact that a uh, the fact that sound uh, that a sound a sound may start as a physical motion that that's hitting that's hitting a string that vibrates, and then that that string turns into electricity that goes through a pickup, and then goes through a chord, and then and then and then and and uh, and then and then comes out of a speaker and and it becomes a, a waveform and then is and then the the way that the air molecules are being moved around is uh, makes an impression on a microphone that turns it again into electrical current and then it can become a sound on a tape and then it can be a be another waveform in the air and and go into a person's ear and and go from being air again to being an electrical current again in the person's brain. Uh, this is just a, a, a process that, that, uh, that it's something that we, we don't understand. We, 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 we can, uh, we can describe it and we can control it. Um, but, but we have, but we have no, we have no idea why it's happening. Scientists can explain what is happening and we can understand what the laws are that make, uh, that, that, we can understand what the laws are that are that are in effect when this is happening, but uh, but we we don't understand why it's happening. We don't. It's it's pretty much the like the process I just described. It's the it's the equivalent of the idea of reincarnation of one person becoming something else. It's it's really all that's ever happening. Nothing's ever dying. And it, anyways, I, and I think even 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 a musical. Uh, even a song, the fact that you only hear it at that single point of right now, yet it's a series of moments, but it never occurs any other time than right now. Um, each each moment in a song is sort of dying and becoming something else as the whole thing's going along. It's basically just it's it's basically just that idea of reincarnation, just just moving through the course of a four-minute song or whatever. It's it's 
one section turns into another section and then goes back into being another section and gradually builds and grows and 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 uh and you know why all this is possible why reality isn't like dreams where things just all of a sudden uh you're in you're in you're in one place and then for no apparent reason and by no by by having nothing to do with your own will you're somewhere else um the fact that reality isn't like that also we, nobody can explain why it, why it's that way you know it's uh and so to to be satisfied with some sort of explanation of what's happening rather than why it's happening is is just silly and you're just uh, people who who are satisfied with that those kind of explanations are just are are i i just i just think that they're they're uh they're ignoring half half of what's going on because you know half of it is that it's happening half of it is that there's something that's making it happen and i guess people you know sometimes it's sometimes things that you we don't understand are scary death is scary because we don't understand it and i guess we put a lot of things that we don't understand in that category because so many of us are so scared of death but um but but you know it it's it's uh it's it's the it's this process that we're sort of living into uh uh and and these these laws of nature that make all these the perpetuation of reality the 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 um the the fact the fact that that uh that rea that 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 yesterday doesn't die that it still remains as a as a thought and what we put on the shelf the day before is still there the next day the fact the fact that that kind of uh consistency is running through things the the fact that there is a permanency of of matter is is uh is also something that we should just be happy that it's that way it could be so many other ways and you can you can see that from your dreams it's like reality could be really hard to get your hand on handle on at all you know um and and luckily we're given this gift of being able to practice something and 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 grow grow uh, familiar with the laws of uh laws of music and and the laws of nature and and gradually be able to create something in the same way that the sun has created us that that you know that the sun is sort of teaching us that lesson in the fact that it's revolving the, doing the same doing the same thing every day um it, it it it's it's telling us all that 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 if you do the same thing every day you can build and build and things will grow as a result of your doing that thing over and over everybody knows this I, they're all getting jobs and stuff they think they're just getting jobs because they want to make money but it's because it's just it's just the way nature works nature works in circles nature works in cycles and uh and to uh, and and if you if you ignore those cycles if you just sit around and do nothing all the time or or if you uh or if you don't follow the interests inside you that compel you to do things um your life will gradually just lose meaning till you're old you know um or if you do something that it's not your will to do your life will also lose meaning till you're old but but the more you explore the fact that by consistently reading or by consistently practicing an instrument or by con consistently studying studying the laws of science uh you you uh you you will you're you will gradually grow in a way that's inward that can't always be measured but will always will will always create fulfillment inside you and will always give you a a fascination for where you are and what you are and and why you're here and and I believe that by doing that in a person in old age can can it's a it, it can be a privilege uh you know uh it can be it can be a it can be a way of going more and more from worrying about the outer presentation of what you are and and being concerned with uh with with uh with with what you are on the outside and you can gradually enrich what you are on the inside and i think any music of any worth has been done by people who are very interested in the internal process of their soul and their mind that's taking place while they're writing music their emotions uh they've always been people who have been concerned with the process of what they do and haven't been very concerned with uh what the outer result of what they're going to do is when it when it leaves their sphere um and i believe the more that even a great musician becomes concerned with with what it is when it leaves their immediate sphere 
the more the, the less contact you have with what's going on inside you because you start to equate the music with the reaction it provokes as opposed to what it naturally is, which is just something that takes place inside you that you have been given the gift of being able to realize and to bring into manifestation. And so, so I, I, I really, you know, I really, I've, I guess, you know, I've always felt strongly on just, on just uh, listening to, to, to the, listening to what your imagination dictates. If your imagination, uh, it, you, you, you know, I, I'm the kind of person I just, I'll shift from liking one kind of music to liking another kind of music to where uh, I'll go through a period of three years where I'm obsessed with one kind of music and then three years later I, I can't even imagine how why I was listening to it. I'm so much in a different place because it was just where my imagination gradually led me. Gradually the idea of listening to one thing stopped being exciting and gradually the idea of listening to another thing seemed more exciting. Um, and it's because I'm judging music based on its quality and 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 I obviously if a person was judging music based on how popular it was or something you would you would tend to to focus your interests around things that were popular and you would tend to 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 make sure that all your musical efforts were 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 uh were coordinated with the the standards that the public sets of of what's considered you know the best and and uh and I believe that, that that kind of thing can make uh, the imagination of a person that should be changing from one thing into the other into into having a fixed idea of what's great, you know. Um, and and uh, the mind should should naturally just just shift from one thing to the other because that's the nature of the mind, you know. It, it jumps from one thought to the other all the time. We have no control over that, but it can, you know. I'm not going to go into that, but but uh, but the. But you know, the, it's it's the nature of our, of everything in reality to change from one thing into another, and uh, and our minds are doing it all the time. And and uh, there's no reason that a person shouldn't completely shift their interest from one musical form to another, or shift their idea of what the idea of a great guitarist is, or what the idea of what music should do is. It's all really natural, and and um, and and you know, to to. Uh, to let the, the 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 ideas of what society tells you, uh, this is a great guitarist. He's number one. Nobody's better than him. It's just it, it, what what that ends up doing is just is just putting a fixed idea about something that people should never have a fixed idea about. You you, you might you know I I'll, I'll go through phases where I'm studying completely you know uh, guitar players who really like weren't very well practiced, but that and and didn't have a lot of technique or anything, but their ideas were so strong and the emotion that they put into what they do was so strong uh, and they were so unique and original that that uh, that that they for that period of time seem better than somebody like Jeff Beck or Jimi Hendrix or people who I also consider to be you know the greatest it's just like but I, I can't see someone like Bernard Sumner from Joy Division as being any less than what Jimi Hendrix was. In my, in my eyes, they're the same thing. And depending on my mood or depending on the time in my life, I'll see, I'll, I'll see one as being extremely uh, relevant to, to, my, to my life. And I'll see another one as having no relevance. And then it'll turn around the other way again. Um, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm really happy that, that, that that that's that that's the way that the brain works and that's and that's the the nature of music is that i don't really think it's i think only only the individual can say for themselves what's what's good and what's worthwhile you know it's it's uh these ideas that the that are perpetuated uh where that 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 uh that trick us into thinking that that there's that there's some sort of a that there's some sort of a criteria for these things is ridiculous. It's only what makes you feel what you feel, you know, and only you know that, you know. So sometimes it, you got to clear your head a little bit and get away from caring about what your friends think is cool or whatever to uh, to to really listening to your subconscious and listening to your own real feelings and and uh, deciding for yourself, you know, what feels right to you, you know. I said I hated music that I didn't hate, I just hated the kids who I associated it with, you know? Um, so when like things like Depeche Mode and, th and stuff came out, I didn't think I liked it and Duran Duran and stuff like that. And I, and I knew in the back of my head that I did like the sound of it, but it, at the time that it came out, 
there was no way that I was going to make any sort of a, that I was even going to admit to myself that I liked it because, because, uh, because I was, I was concerned about the outer appearance of what that would mean if I liked it or something, or creating some kind of a fixed identity of me as the guy who really, you know, in, in, into the music I was into, which obviously I was also, really, I was much more into than I would have been then anyways, but you know, with whatever things like King Crimson and, and Genesis and Yes and stuff like that, like, like, uh, that's, that was, that was where, what I was, uh, what I really related to the most and what gave, what I felt like gave me identity. But gradually, when I did start to get into things like Depeche Mode and Duran Duran, I was like, you know, I remember liking this when I heard it. I just didn't admit it to myself, you know. Would have been one thing to keep it secret from other people. That's its own issue. But, but to not even let myself know it. I remember recording a Depeche Mode song on the radio. And then when, when I realized it was them, I stopped recording it. And, you know, and it was, and, and uh, you know, I loved the sound of it, and that should have been all I was going by, you know? I shouldn't have been concerned about, oh, these people like it who I don't like, or something like that, you know? It's like, it's a silly way to think, and I guess I have the reverse of it. Most people like things because other people like them, and, 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 uh, and I think either way, either way you're, 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 you're doing yourself an injustice, because you like everything you like for a reason. If something sounds good to you, it sounds that way for a reason, and, and even if you don't understand something right away, sometimes if there's some little part of your brain that says there's something healthy here or there's something interesting here, sometimes it's important also to do that. I did that, you know, with jazz and stuff like it didn't, I guess I grew up around classical music, so I didn't have an ear for jazz the way some people do when they're young, but, but, uh, I knew that there was something there for me. And so I learned things on my guitar and gradually developed the receptors in my brain, the emotional receptors in my brain that, uh, that relate, to the types of feelings and sounds and chords and melodies that are in that kind of music and and uh, and you know there's so much there's there's been so many forces working against people to to come up with a fixed idea of what they like that that uh, that that sometimes you kind of have to train yourself to figure out what you actually like because it turns out I really love jazz and it really means a lot to me but those doors hadn't been opened up in my head or like I said just those receptors hadn't needed to be woken up you know. And, and uh, so, so I, I really just think it's important to pay attention to the nature of the way that the brain relates to music and, and, uh, and, and, and to, to, to listen to every, every little thing it dictates in terms of how you can get more, to every, every little thing it dictates in terms of how you can get more from, from, from all the wealth of beautiful music that there is in the world. There's an incredible amount of great music. It's really... It's unbelievable that so much has resulted from us. I mean, there's, a, there's as much as there is food growing out of the ground and plants growing out of the ground. It's, you know, it's, it's there if you gravitate towards it and if you put the energy into it. I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's really unwise to just, you know, buy whatever the thing is that's pushed down your throat next, you know? It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's important to look for things and to find, and to find things yourself. You'll find that something is guiding you towards the things that you need to be listening to. The more you do it, the more in touch with that force you'll be. Uh, you know, nature wants you to look at its beautiful fruits and eat its beautiful fruits and, and, and eat its vegetables and look at its trees and feel its wind. And, it, and nature wants you to listen to the music that, it, that, that it's resulted in. You know, no reason to think of uh, the efforts of man as being separate from nature. It's, it's all just one thing. It's nature. It's what exists. One thing. <laughs> I get the impression. I I talked to a, a a psychic and she said something about my cats liking the the no they they enjoy the noise that I make. Um, and she also said something about them not having the same uh, perception of time that we do. So it started to make me wonder uh, because music is so uh, intrinsically connected to time it you know it is sound being structured through time that that uh that that uh that that their perception of it they wouldn't hear the organization of it in the way that we do it it's funny how with a with a piece of music you're you're just following your feelings but you you, you play something that uh that is good in the form that you make it in but if one note was off it would if, if one note was in a slightly different place 
it would sound totally wrong and sound like it didn't at all follow a, a, a coherent train of thought. Um, it's real specific why one note sounds good following the next. And again, it's something you just gradually learn by following your intuition. It's not something that can be directly, or at least it's never been directly explained, but, but, uh, or, or understood. But, um, but it has to do just with the setup of our brain. We perceive time at the, in the way that we perceive it because of our, the setup of our brains and our sensory apparatus and, 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 uh, and our nervous system. It's, it, it's not, it's not so much that time's definitively going at that rate. It's, it's perfectly, it's totally possible for another species to be experiencing everything at a completely different rate. Um, it seems to me like flies must experience it at a drastically different rate. They're way too on top of it for having such small brains. Um, and, and, uh, and, and so, so uh, I figure my cat, that cats are probably hearing time speeding up and slowing down or something all the time. And that, that what, what we hear as being musical organization and a coherent train of thought just doesn't sound like a coherent train of thought to them. But at the same time, they seem to respond to m the music. They, my cats love it when I listen to music with them more than anything, you know. Um, and, and, but I, I believe that they're, uh, that it's because they feel the feelings that you're feeling when you're listening to it, you know? I believe there's a, uh, that, that, that cats are, are, are uh, that cats hear what you're, what you're, they feel what you're feeling and they, they're, from what I'm told, their thoughts are in, uh, they think more in pictures and they don't think in words and, uh, and you can transfer the pictures in your mind to your animal. And, uh, and, and so I, I think that they must be feeling what I'm feeling just in the same way that, again, you know, with sex, it's like when, when one, both people are gradually causing each other to feel the same thing as one another. It's, it's a, it's a, it, and, and when people come to a show, be, by, by, the, by the power of the music, um, the audience is generally all feeling more or less the same thing, you know, altered a bit by one person's personality or one person's capacity to feel to another's. But, but basically they're, there's, they're, they're, they're all feeling what each other's feeling. And I think that's what's taking place when, uh, you know, when an animal owner really loves their animal and their dog comes running when they hear them playing the piano, I think they really like hearing them play the piano because, it's it's when it's when their their family member is feeling you know is feeling what they're feeling and they like they like being in a room with that energetic current throwing, flowing through it. So yeah, I don't I don't so I don't I don't I think they hear the sound, but I don't think they they experience it the same way that we do. But I think they still they still experience it, and the end result is still the same feeling, most likely. You know, at least that's the way I've put it together. <laughs> One of the most beautiful things that I, that I that I think about live music is is the fact that for the period of time that those people are in the place, um, assuming that all the people came there because they love because 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 they the feeling the music generates the feelings in them that the music dictates, um, uh, that they're they're all generally feeling the same thing. They're all they're all basically feeling good at the same time. Uh, they've all put all their thoughts about their everyday life out of their head, all their worries, they're just not on their mind. They're, they're, uh, they're, the, the, the power of, of, of music has joined all their, all their, uh, all their consciousnesses in, into one thing, you know, they're, they're, they're literally functioning as, as one organism, you know, and, and, and they're, they're all feeling more or less the same, the same thing. And, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's no different than, than, uh, you know, when, when people are, uh, you know, when people have sex and, and they gradually cause each other to, to, uh, feel what the other one is feeling. It's a, and, and, uh, you know, in, in any event, it's at a sporting event, it's the same thing. They're, they're every, everybody is, is connected to, the things that are that are taking that are that are taking place and the emotions that it arouses in them and and uh and and uh and it and it unites people in a way that in their everyday lives it's you know it's a part of the tragedy of existence we're, we're all 
you know, alone in here, you know, it's, it's, uh, you're, there's no escape from that, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're inside your body, whether you like it or not. And, and so, so, uh, so to, so to be able to, uh, to be able to feel that what's in you is in everybody around you, I think is your ability to experience the real truth of what's really going on, that it's all one thing, you know.